Hello, this is Emma. I hope you're doing well. Here we are. This is the video after ASMR happens, the live theatre session. I've needed quite a few days to bring myself back into balance. It hasn't been easy. I've been absolutely exhausted mentally and physically from top to bottom. It was absolutely awesome in so many ways. Everything I hoped it would be, it was that and more. So I know that there were lots of people who wanted to go and lots of people who would have been there if it were uh, possible. So I'm really excited to make this video to explain why I was so determined to do it in the first place and to show you what happened. So there's a lot of footage, I've been going through it all and as this video progresses you will see clips over the top, okay? And you might see a few little jumps and editing because I have notes behind you and I want to make sure I don't miss anything out at all. Okay. When I first announced the event, I didn't explain why I really wanted to do it and what we were going to do in the theatre. I just wanted it to be a surprise for everyone that was there and also I wanted to see the process of how people would think and what was expected. It was interesting for me because I wanted to do this for so long since starting the channel and I just felt like it was the right thing to do and rather than explain in words I would prefer to just do it and show what it is I mean so that hopefully it will be more understandable in the situation. I like to just get on with things and uh, just show how it can work. So the biggest hurdle for me I felt was that the ASMR person had to be calm because how can you allow people to feel calm and to possibly feel tingles when you're tense yourself. So that was the biggest hurdle for me and I just tried to stay as calm as I possibly could and try not to um, overdo things beforehand and try not to get involved in conversations about it and that kind of thing because all of those things made me super, super nervous because for an ASMR content creator who's been sitting in front of a camera for years, like so many other people we know, to suddenly walk out onto a stage and see faces, it's mind-blowing. I don't think there's really a word to explain it, it's absolutely mental. I was a mixture of terrified excited, grateful, tearful, emotional, everything. Honestly, it was just awesome. I'm so grateful for that experience. So, personally I get tingles in public places. I know lots of people do. I've had them in theatres as well. It feels like being in a den, almost. And somehow in a public place, your brain singles out sounds and puts others to the background. And so I thought that it was, wasn't my intention to give people tingles, although I felt it could be achieved by accident. It was more an intention to create calm in everyone who was there. So... It didn't make sense to have everyone clap or anything, so we had a little message before everyone went into the theatre to say a big smile will be enough, so don't clap. 
it just felt right to keep everything nice and calm and gentle. I would have liked the audience to be on bean bags or sofas, but with the budget that we had, it just wasn't possible, and we just had to use the chairs that the theatre had for us. But the actual space we used was really cool. We had um, a huge white room, and that was the room for everyone to gather in. We had tables out with head massages, and we had bowls with those water beads, all of different colours, with coffee beans to feel, because whenever I go into a coffee shop, I always like to feel the beans in front of the till. Feathers and all kinds of things for people just to be um, tactile and get, the, get in the mood, just tingly things. And there was a bar as well. We had lights and projections on the walls. So it's a, it was a really nice homely feel. And I also had incense burning all day long. So when you walked into the white room, as it's called, you were just um, enveloped in calm. And that was the idea, just because it was so exciting to be there and people were walking in really excited and chatting with each other. So it was our sort of initial space to create some nice calm before coming into the theatre half an hour later. I'd like to tell you why I think that ASMR sessions should be a thing. There are lots of reasons. One of the main reasons is to bring people together and to create an event that allows people to have an excuse to meet up and make friends and swap numbers and to connect with each other. I think YouTube has been absolutely vital and just amazing for our community and so many other communities. The internet's amazing to com uh, to connect with other people, to find people from all over the world, from all different backgrounds, to find a common interest and to realise that we are all very similar with similar needs and, and um, ideas and feelings about everything. So the internet has really, really helped us but I feel like sometimes we're in danger of allowing the internet to stop us from going any further. The joy that you feel from being in someone's presence, talking face to face, reading facial cues, um, body language and feeling each other's energy is just amazing and the authenticity <clears throat> The authenticity from speaking one-to-one -one with someone who's very like-minded, there's no judgment there, is really important for us. So the internet can kind of stop us from taking that next step and meeting. So I feel like it's the next, it's the natural progression for ASMR, the ASMR community, to have events where we can all meet up in person and there are lots of us with social anxieties myself included if I stay at home for too long then I have trouble sort of breaking that barrier and getting out so I have to make sure that I get out and I speak to people and I'm busy so it's quite helpful for people with certain social anxieties. I don't mean very serious, I mean just um, slight um, tendency to go within and to not communicate so much and have that fear of meeting people face to face because we're, we're confronted with a lot of our insecurities, aren't we? What will people think of us? You know, I don't need to say. But when you find a community where everybody's kind or the majority of people are kind and non-judgmental and everyone's feeling the same way, you really don't have to have those worries. So 
I feel like it's the natural step for us to have these community gatherings and for me it didn't really matter what we did on the stage at the actual session what mattered to me to me most was that people came and they met up beforehand and they walked in as friends and they chatted and just had conversations about an interest, a common interest and talk about ASMR for a long length of time. I remember before I found ASMR videos I'd never had a conversation with anyone about the tingly feeling that I experienced for more than half a sentence really. I didn't talk, I tried to talk to people about it but they didn't understand what I was talking about so I couldn't carry on that conversation. Another reason was to bring ASMR into a different place that's more accepted by society to be normal. I wanted to normalise this experience that we have. Sometimes the videos are seen as quite strange and that's absolutely fine, I can see why, but to people who are seeing it for the first time it's quite mind-blowing isn't it to see a role play and we're not used to seeing someone come up close to the camera and look at the camera very lovingly, we're not used to seeing that in a non-sexual way. So I wanted to put it in a theatre because everyone knows that going to a theatre, you're going to an event and you're expecting to experience and feel something, so it kind of fits and I still get emails from people who are struggling to explain um, their love for ASMR videos and their tingly sensation that they feel to explain it to friends and family and I feel like if I can be brave then I can encourage others to be the same. So I want to make ASMR more of a thing that's seen as normal. I want to normalise what we do because it's absolutely natural. It's just a feeling. It's just that we've suddenly described a feeling that not everybody experiences. Some people are more sensitive than others, that's all it is. And it's perfectly natural. So that's what I wanted to do and it was also very interesting for me to hear afterwards when I spoke to people a few people said to me that they'd come along with their partner or their friend and before they didn't really understand it but after seeing the session they were able to understand and they could see it for what it is because they didn't have that barrier of the YouTube video and the lady doing all of this and being all gentle that was a bit strange for them, but seeing it in a theatre, they could understand it. So that was very interesting for me. Also, I feel like sound has a different effect in person. I did take my singing bowls along with me, purely because I wanted to have them with me during the day so I could keep myself calm. And... I felt like it would have been too much to just come straight out onto the stage in front of everyone. Um, I wanted to have something to do in the meantime to break down the different uh, stages. Is that the right way to, to explain it? Um, I wanted to come on, play the balls, calm everyone down and just create the atmosphere and then sit down and feel a bit calmer myself in everyone's presence and then start to talk and it did help a lot but especially with something like the singing bowls the sound is very difficult to capture on a microphone um, so you have to be there really to fully experience the sound as you feel the vibration through your body and all the different aspects of the sound vibrating around the room and the frequencies and how the sound changes when it hits the walls and all of that. So I know we don't play a lot of the balls and things in videos but it's just my way of explaining that sounds 
can be different in different situations. So that's another reason. And the final reason is just because it's fun and to do something fun for myself, not just myself, the community and everybody. It was so fun for me to actually come face to face with the people who watch the videos and I can get a real feel for who everyone is and how they look and how beautiful they are and how lovely and I had cuddles and everything and it was just fantastic. It was absolutely amazing. So yes, it was just again, the finally just something fun for everyone to experience and some excitement for us all. So why don't I take you through the process of how it came about in a practical sense and what we actually did in the session and what happened on the stage. So I won't show you the session from start to finish because as it turns out, we, um, we might be able to do it again. In fact, I think we probably are going to do it again. So it's already written and it, it's the, everything is prepared. So it's a nice little package together and it's all ready to go. So we won't show the whole thing because then it would spoil it for people who might see it in the future, if that makes sense. So I'm going to explain what we did and show you clips and, and some of the footage that we took. Pete and I, Pete Wallace, who I worked with on this event and will do on subsequent events, uh, he runs a projection company called Butch Anti, and he contacted me a long time ago and we had conversations about ASMR but then I told him I wanted to do a live thing and he'd had the idea to do a live, a live session as well. And I did a little one at, at the South Bank Centre last year, very small, I didn't even announce it until the day before and it was just an experiment for me just to try it out and it went really well and I put the video up on this channel. And after that, a bit later on, then Pete and I were talking again and we decided to finally go for it and I was really excited. So. We started planning and we looked at venues and Pete is uh, excellent, he knows a lot of people in, in the industry and he was able to uh, put us in contact with people who could help um, put the whole thing together and be there at the event because we needed a lot of crew. So we were searching for venues and that was probably the hardest part was looking for somewhere to do it. And everywhere was very expensive and some places were just perfect but we weren't able to get in to prepare properly throughout the day. We only had an hour or whatever and we had a, a long list of needs to start with and they kind of dwindled a little bit. We had to make compromises, rather like when you're looking for a house and you finally uh, come to the realisation that everything you want is too expensive. So it was kind of like that really. I would have really liked to have everybody on bean bags or sofas. I don't know if I've said that already. And and that was just one of the things, but we had to go with what we could. And I kept reminding myself that it was more, more important that we actually did it and we put all of our love into it and the greatest would come out of it. So that's what happened. So found a venue and it was the Courtyard Theatre in Hoxton and they allowed us to be there all day setting up. There was a big room that we could use to have everyone in first, which I've said, and then the theatre and it was just enough for 150 seats and it was all black in there so we were able to decorate it how we wanted and we had, um, they had technical people there who could help us out. So. 
what we decided to do was uh, use all of Pete's projection, proje projectors and I was racking my brains of what we could actually do in the session and what would work for the first time round, what would not be too much of um, a scary prospect for me and something that would be calming and not try to say here you are, now you have to feel tingles and I also didn't want to touch people because that would invade <laughs> their privacy because we all know that we can give people tingles by playing with their hair and stroking their arms and all of that um, but I wouldn't presume to be to have permission to do that kind of thing so it had to be something that could potentially give tingles but it had a different message and it was more of a relaxation session so I contacted my friend Katie Soane who is a writer she's an ASMR viewer and I've known her for a long time and I asked her to write something along the lines of a meditation so that we could use sound over the top and projections in the background. So we talked back and forth for quite a few months and it was quite painful at times because I was scared and every time I spoke about it it became a reality and it was nerve wracking and all of that and in the end she just wrote this really lovely um, meditation and it was a very long, long, long lots and lots of paragraphs and it would have taken me a long time to read so we um she said it was fine for me to just edit it as i pleased and put it into my own words and all of that so i went ahead and did that and condensed it down changed the words to have the same meaning but just so that it would sound as so though it was something that I would say and I could feel comfortable saying it and it just worked absolutely perfectly and it had a lovely message so she, uh, I'll put her link in the description she runs workshops for mindfulness and she encourages people to write with the aim of becoming mindful and creative so that's Katie and she was there and We've spoken on the phone and we've had uh, Skype calls before but never met in person so it was just amazing to see her and the funny thing was when she walked towards me I didn't feel like I'd. this was a first meeting it was just, oh hi, there you are it was just lovely and it was like, you know we'd been together as friends for years so it was just wonderful and she chatted to everyone and made friends and then we had coffee the next day it was just really 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 great so thank you Katie if you see this um, the next step once we had the content was to organize the all the projections and so we had meeting after meeting after meeting Pete and I deciding what to do and then deciding all the sounds that were going to go over the top of that we decided to have all of the audience in headphones and we managed to get hold of the Neumann binaural head so I was sitting with the head in front of me and we all had headphones on so we were all kind of enveloped in this cosy space together and it was very dark and with the projections on the back wall behind me so we hoped to create a relaxing atmosphere and we of course had the smell of incense lingering from the daytime and it was really lovely and then after the meditation session it was kind of a freestyle moment so I had uh, a little bag and there was a wig and a brush so I put the wig on the 
on the head and just brushed the hair and ran my hands down the side and did basically what I would do in a video. And it was so strange because as I was doing that, I was thinking, oh no, I feel like this is a bit boring for everyone and I shouldn't do it for too long. Even though I was feeling relaxed as I did it, I was kind of judging myself because I've never done, obviously, anything like that with people watching and I'm not sure if anyone has. So it was, it was a big experiment and I could have done actually with just saying, hang on guys, everyone stop. Is this all right for you? Should I carry on? Should I do something else? <laughs> um, but obviously I didn't, I just carried on and, and the feedback afterwards, loads of people said to me, you should have carried on doing that. Oh, that was my, uh, one of my favorite bits. I really liked it. And that was really encouraging. So I know that to do that again would work uh, in the right setting. So we did that and goodness me, walking out onto that stage, we started off with a projection of a little video and then once that was finished, I came out and just saw everyone and straight away I had a massive lump in my throat and I just wanted to, my lips started to go and I just wanted to cry. Um, it was the most, there aren't any words, it was just really beautiful. And I'm feeling quite sentimental about that moment and the evening itself because it'll, it'll always be if the first time and the first time will always be special and it may not be the best one that anyone will ever do but um, it'll be my first one and I'm just so excited to have done that and no matter how overwhelming it was, how scary it was, how emotional it was and I look back at the footage and I think gosh you look so scared and so nervous and I wanted to say so much when I sat down there but the words just couldn't come out because I was so tense. Um, but that none of that really matters, you know, because it's the first one, it was the first one and I'm really proud to have done it. Hello. <laughs> wow. So, I really hope that other people do the same thing. And I hope that I can do it again and I get a, a little bit more um, confident at it and able to do that. Um, I really hope that it continues. And the main reason I hope it continues is afterwards. So when it was finished and everyone walked out of the theatre and back into the white room and it was a lot darker in there then the sun had gone in and it was dark outside and the lights were dimmer and some people went home because they had to catch their trains and then lots of people stayed and I walked out and met everybody and I didn't get to have a conversation with absolutely everyone in that room but I really managed to speak to a lot of people and goodness me it was just incredible I can picture everyone now and everyone smiling and I gave as many hugs and cuddles as I could. Some of it was very emotional and it was really touching 
to be in the presence of people who've been watching this channel and other channels for so many years um, and have got so much out of ASMR videos and really see, just like I do, the beauty in it and the kindness in it and the love in it. Those, those people are really special and it was nice to spend time chatting and giving cuddles and just looking into their eyes. Um, and if you were there, uh, I'd just like to say thank you so much for making that such a special night. When I got home, uh, I stayed in a hotel just down the road and when I got back to my room, I just sat on the bed and I, I didn't go to sleep till about three in the morning because I was just buzzing all that time. Um, And I could just picture everyone's faces. And I remember saying at the time, I think it's all a bit much right now. I think tomorrow I'm just going to sit and cry somewhere <laughs> and just let it all out. It was just really wonderful and I really, really hope that other people can experience that too. And I hope that having done this, it can encourage others to do the same and for people to um, just get together that way. It was just really lovely. I'm really, really grateful for the experience and thank you again for the zillionth time to the people that went and thank you again for the zillionth, zillionth time to people who couldn't go, who wanted to and were there in spirit. <laughs> and those hugs that were had in that moment were hugs for everyone and I just felt like it was one big oneness of love and people and everyone was together and everyone was a part of one big thing and it was wonderful, so thank you. So there we go. Um, one thing, there was a meet-up beforehand, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but um, Lawrence, whose channel I will link, he agreed and well he offered and then he kind of ended up doing much more <laughs> than he offered so thank you Lawrence but he got everyone together who people who were traveling on their own who didn't have anyone to actually walk into the event with had a meet up beforehand and they went for dinner and had a chat and got together and just walked in as friends and it was really nice so thank you Lawrence and that's it, so ASMR Happens, live 2017, it's a wrap, and I hope to be announcing another one at some point, I think it would be just the most awesome thing now to have conventions, to have other different group relaxation sessions, to have different fun events just for the fun of it and to have every, bring people together just lots of different things I just feel like it's just natural and we could do this all over the world how that would be organised <laughs> the logistics of everything I don't know but if ever any more opportunities come along to do this again maybe in another country maybe with an other ASMR artists or something, or if I can help organise another ASMR artist to do it on their own, anything, it would just be absolutely 100% awesome. So thank you for watching this very long video. I hope you've enjoyed the little clips over the top of my rambling, my very quick rambling. I shall now resume normal scheduling and normal calm and slow scheduling of regular ASMR videos. So watch this space. I love you so much. Thank you for enriching my life and making me feel so wanted and um, that I belong and I'm so, so grateful for it. And if I can make anyone else feel the same, then I will.
try with all of my might to do that. I will be forever grateful for this tingly feeling for the community that surrounds it. I could go on all night, but I love you and thank you. Sweet dreams.